thing in liberty. When I go on a bit of work, I have to know the man standing next to me is proper. Because we all get caught at some point. You can't do what we do and expect not to go to prison. You're always going to do that in this country. Now, I can give you an example of two rules that we have, really. Now, rules get broken, bended, but the proper men follow these rules. You don't ever, ever grass anyone and you don't thieve off your own. They're the two things we don't do. Some people do. Now, I'll give you an example. If I'm going on a bit of work on the pavement and there's three of us. Now, if two of my mates get away and I get caught, I'm expected to go away and do the prison and keep my mouth shut. It's only horrible people that go, I don't like being the only one in this boat. Now, I want to put you in it and all. I'm happy if my mates get away over the moon. And I'm expected to sit behind the wall and what I expect from them is to look after my family. Like a pension, Christmases, birthdays, make sure they've got the money. Make sure they're looked after. Got to have honour amongst thieves. Otherwise, don't even bother being in our game. Can you mention uh, Billy and Eddie? Billy and Eddie Blundell. Now, a little while after Reggie and Ronnie got nicked, there was loads of little arseholes out there who fancied them, I don't know why they fancied themselves as Reggie and Ronnie, because they weren't no role models. But these two did, they was a the kind of people, now I didn't come across them in a social reason, I didn't sit there and drink with them, but I knew what they were. They're the kind of people in the pub, now we all know people like this, that talk themselves up. Everything out of their mouth made you cringe. Now you sit there and think, what an idiot. If someone else wants to talk you up, that's acceptable. Let someone say something about you, something nice, subtle compliments, lovely. But you start doing it yourself and you sound like an utter mug. And that's the sort of thing they do. I'm this, I'm that. They're not my cup of tea. So I'll never really socialise with people like that. But how we come across each other was a row. Now, the papers, this is why you don't trust the media, they called it mini-cab warfares. Because I had a cab office and so did they, but it had nothing to do with that. What it was was our mate Lenny, this is Lenny Thompson, my mate, his, uh, his wife ended up having an affair with her cousin Pepe. Now it got messy. I could sit here go on about an hour just for this situation, but I won't. How it turns out is Lenny's got us behind him and Pepe's got his, his cousins, Eddie and Billy. Now Tommy and of us ended up getting involved. He's had a row with Eddie. Eddie's got a bit mouthy. He's turned up down his yard, Tommy and of And then Tommy and of us let a couple of shots off down the yard. Their cousin Pepe's grasped. Nicely, nicely he's now involved because he's trying to make Eddie and Billy retract them statements. It was an utter mess. But I didn't need to get involved. They was, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong, I will die with nicely and Tommy and ever. But they didn't need me. They was handling it. So... My personal album started over a bit of bleeding jewellery. Unbelievable. Now, I'm in a pub called the Burnell Arms in East End. And years ago, we used to get people selling parcels. What that means is it's just nick gear. It could be clothes or jewellery, like with me. So this fella's in there selling this parcel of jewellery for him, and he's selling it like, for them. I mean, Eddie and Billy Blundell, that's who he's selling it for. And I'm in the pub and I'll see him and I'll go, look, let's have a look at that. And in this parcel was this ring and it was worth more than everything in there put together. So now I want it, don't I? But I didn't have the money on me. And our money was tied up in something else. So I said, look, can I take that and I'll pay you at the end of the week for it? And the fella, I've got a good name everywhere. The fella went, yeah, yeah, no problem, Dan. I'll come and see you at the end of the week for that. We didn't get to the end of the week. Two days have gone by. And I'm in my cab office now, and we lived above it, my cab office moaners. I'm sitting there, my wife Julie, my mum Mona, and all my drivers are there, and a door bursts open, and this big bodybuilding twat comes through the door, and he goes, where's Danny O'Halloran? And I went, I'm Danny, who's asking? He went, Billy and Eddie sent me. I went, oh, I'll see you in a minute. I said, come through the back here, I don't talk business in front of my family. He went, no. Nah. No, no, no. I'm going to my car. You can come out to me. And he slammed the door. Now, there's nothing I can do. I've got my mum. 
I've got my missus, all my drivers, I can't go and get tooled up and go outside, so I've just had to swallow and walk out, and I? So I've walked out the door, and I've gone out, and as soon as I've got there, I've gone in, what's all this about, mate? And he went, don't fucking play dumb. He went, you took a fucking liberty taking them things on tick. Eddie and Billy didn't say you could have them bits on tick. Now go upstairs and go and fucking get them before I come in and get them, you skinny cunt. Now, he's just threatened to come into my house. I live above this place. You just take what he likes. So, he's sitting like that in his car with his arm hanging out and I've, I'm at the window now and I've gone, all right, all right, look, no problem. I'm pretending now, you know, I'm worried. I'm not. I'm seriously not because I know what I'm going to do. So I've gone, all right, no problem. I went, look, I'm just going to have a quick fag fry cup and get him. Can you give us a minute? And I went, oh, can I borrow your lighter in your console? And he's sitting there all face grimaced up like that and he's turned his head to look at the lighter and get it. And as he's done that, I've done exactly what Frankie done. And I've got hold of his head and clamped my teeth onto his ear, bit a chunk out, spat it back in the car. The fella's screaming at the top of his head. Now, I told you, a fight's over. These are the worst weapon you've got. These will do, if you can get close enough, these will do more damage than any other thing you can pick up and do someone with, I promise you. And no one wants to know. You have a bit, chuck, bit out of your ear or your nose or your cheek, you don't want to fight anymore. You're more worried about the damage you've done. And he's like that, holding his ear. So I've opened the door, I've dragged him out, stuck my knee on his chest, and I'm punching him and budging. And I've heard, Danny! And I've turned around. It's my wife, my mum, all the bleeding neighbours. The only one who was bleeding, smiling, it was a Sikh neighbour, Mr. Marhill. He's standing there like that, with a smile on his face. And I, he was the only one that could walk around at all. He had a big blade like that. If I walked around with a blade like that, I'd be nicked instantly. So... I've stopped what I'm doing. I've got up. Everyone's got a face like thunder. As I'm walking in, I've heard a crash. He's got back in the car where he's such a, in such a state, he smashed into one of the neighbour's cars. I've had to pay for that. So, I've gone back inside and now I'm in the doghouse. Now, you'd have thought I started this row. I finished it. I didn't start it. He was threatening to come in my own. My mum and my wife and kids there, liberty. So a couple of days have gone by now. No one's talking to me. And my mum comes in my living room upstairs where we used to live. And she was well spoken, my mum. She gave herself elocution lessons. She went, Daddy, um, there's, there's two men at the door and one of them's dressed up like a boxer. <laughs> I said, one of them dressed up like a bleeding boxer. Hold on a minute. So I've got up like that. And I've gone to the window. And it's Billy and Eddie Blundell across the road. Standing near their car. Now, Eddie Blundell, the twat, has got his jogging bottoms on, boxing boots and hand wraps. And so he's standing there like that. He's not here for fun, is he? So, I've gone downstairs into the kitchen. And I, I didn't have a gun at the time. So I pulled out this big blade. And nicely, I've gone straight back to Tommy's house. And we've had to sort him out. Cut the stick. He's got a cut, little cut in his head. And Tommy's going mental. Tommy's wanted to do these for ages. I told you this would happen. Now, I hate it when someone says that, don't you? But we've got to go on them now. So, Tommy straight away says, right, I'm ringing up Shorey. Now, this was another one of our friends who used to come on the pavement with us, and it was a fella called Roy Shaw. Now, he was a prize fighter, but he was game as you like when it came to earning a couple of quid and all. And he was close with me, Tommy, and especially Tommy's sister, Rosie. So I've left that to him. I said, right, you get hold of Roy, and I'll get hold of Tyrone. Now, Tommy couldn't get hold of Roy. I can't remember if he was banged up or out in the piss for a couple of days, one of the two. But I've got hold of Tyrone. Now, we didn't have mobiles back then. It's not like you just get hold of someone like that. But I've managed to get hold of him. And the first thing he's done, he, I don't want to know the details, then. I'll come and meet you around Tommy's, and we'll fucking do these arseholes. And... I was just pleased he said that. So, now, you've got me, Tyrone, Nicely, and Tommy to go on them and we're going to their cab office. They have one in Hilton's. So, we've pulled up behind this car, outside their office, one of their drivers, Billy Blundell, is standing outside talking to them and he spotted us. Now, the fat little shit has turned around and bolted straight into his office like a whippet now, Tyrone and Tommy are out of the cars lively. Now, they both had handguns. 
me and nicely in the booth had a couple of sawn offs because we was going to go on a bit of work in a couple of weeks so we took them with us and we had a couple of baseball bats and I went there so they're out like lightning this is all happening in seconds they're in there letting shots off like the OK Corral me and nicely have gone behind the boot and as I'm trying to get the key in the boot nicely's nudged me I've turned round and their cab off is in an alleyway and there was a wall there and we've seen a couple of fat little legs come over the top and drop down and come running down the alley. It's Billy Blunder. He's come running down the alleyway, spotted us outside the boot, turned and ran to his car. Now, you know that saying, less speed, more haste. I'm like that, trying to get the key in the boot to get the tools out. And he's got to the, 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 his car door and pulled out a full-length shotgun. Nicely, he's dived behind the car. The car door was open, so all I could do was just go in like that. And he's let off a couple of shots. Now, I don't know where they went. I think one of them did it to Carl somewhere. But all I've got on me in my pocket is a bottle of ammonia. And I know nicely he's got this lock knife. So all I can do is start the engine and just drive at him. So that's what I've done. I've put my foot down. And as I've gone at him, he's gone bang. He's let a shot go. He's hit the car. I think he took the wing mirror out or something. And I've carried on going to go at him. He's dived out of the way. The car's gone through the cab office and he's let off another shot. Now this time, this time this shot has taken out my windscreen, taken out the dashboard, the speedometer has gone everywhere and I felt that on the side of the face. I've caught the spray. The shotgun spreads like that. So where I've caught the spray and my adrenaline's going, I ain't really felt it. But there's blood everywhere so I can't see. You know, you're doing that when it's above your eyes and all that. So I've opened up the door got out of the car, stumbled out of the car. As I've got out, I've seen Blundell with an empty gun, it's cocked, running back down the alleyway and nicely chasing after him, <laughs> like that. So I've run after him, I can't see nothing. I'm doing that, wiping all the shit out of my eyes and out. I've gone in the alleyway and nicely jumped on him like a lion on a gazelle. Now he's turned around, he's going, hold him then, hold him. So I can't see nothing, I'm bleeding all like that and I've got hold of him, I've got his arms up his back. Nicely he's pulled out his blade and now he's begging. Now he wants to beg, he's like, please, please don't do it, come look, you can hear the old Bill, he'll be here in a minute. We could, in the distance. And nicely he's gone to him, uh, now, 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 don't worry about that Bill, you'll be dead before they get here. And he's gone crash, crash, done him. Bad, three times. He did him that bad, he nearly did me. I'm holding, well, hold on, hold on. Now, he did the right thing. Bill, when he got cut, all he did was put his hands on his face like that and scream through gritted teeth. That's the right thing to do. And he's dropped to his knee. Now, I told you I was spiteful. I'm not making excuses here. So what I've done was I pulled his hands away from his face and I got out my bottle of ammonia and I emptied the bottle right in his face and he screamed out, his cuts have gone like that, he's in bits now. Tommy and Tyrone heard him from inside the office. They're done now, they've come back down the alleyway and they've seen us drop blunder on the floor and we've had to go, have it on our toes. Now, I don't know what happened in the office. So I went, what, what, what happened? Tyrone went, well I shot one of the fucking mugs, didn't I? He's got one of them, but Tommy shot Eddie Blunder in the gut. And right there, and Blundell has crawled out the back of his office and they had a shed in their backyard out, out where their premises were and he's locked himself in the shed. Apparently, someone was on all fours and helped Billy Blundell get over the wall. This is all happened while we was outside. So now he's in the, uh, in the shed. Tommy's gone in with his gun. He had this old Luger, old German gun. Very reliable gun normally. He's gone in the shed and Blundell is pissing himself. Literally. And he's put the gun to his head and he's begging, please, please, Tom, please, mate, please, Tommy. And he's put the gun to his head like that. And he's pulled the trigger. He's out of bleeding ammo. Now, Tommy, as he's walked out, has left him to bleed out, but he's done that line. He always reminded me of that one out of the life of Brian. He's walked out going, you lucky, lucky bastard. And just left him there to bleed out. Now, we have to have it on our toes. When you do someone, you've got to get away. We don't know if they're dead. They could have been dead. We're up for murder. 
So we have to find out what's happened. You do that away from the scene of the crime. Now, what we got told wasn't that they was dead. We didn't expect this. What they did is they fucking named us. The dirty, no good fucking grass cunts had fucking named us. Now, I have to apologise to the ladies here for my language, yeah? But I can't help it. These are supposed to be villains. Supposed to be proper men. They want to go to war with us, but when it don't work out in their favour, they want to say our names. Now, how I know this is I saw the statements. I saw them. They retracted their statements when they found out how everyone would know their grasses, but it's too late. The damage is done. As soon as they say our names, they don't need to be in court because the old bill knows who to nick. They know where to go, don't they? It's Danny O'Halloran. It's Tommy Enniver. It's nicely. Now, it's funny, isn't it? Tyrone didn't get named or nicked. He's from South London. They didn't have a clue. They'd never met him before. Didn't have a clue who he was. So how can they pull him in? Now, this is a perfect example of a grass. The moment they mentioned our names, it's too late. The damage is done. This is what a grass is. It's Danny and Tommy. Now, even if they retracted the statements, which they did, only because they was worried what everyone was going to say, but it's too late. The old bill nicked us. They've got us. So, 